That brings us to adding VLANs now. Now VLANs, of course, are going to be virtual local area networks. That's what it stands for. Um, it kind of is descriptive for what it means, too. Remember, we're on, on a local area network, we're in a, a separate broadcast domain, right? Um, so if I'm on two different VLANs, two different local networks, they are separate broadcast domains from another, and we need a router to route between those two networks, okay? So the minute I, I create two different VLANs on a switch, I've created two completely different networks, eventually, that will be connecting at layer three, okay? So you can see here, we're, we're adding VLANs to a switch, and we're doing it directly to the VLAN database, all right? So in this case, VLAN 11, which is named phones, okay? That's now been created in the VLAN database. It hasn't been assigned to any ports anywhere uh, yet, but it could be eventually assigned to a port. So you guys have seen for sure when you go into the, the uh, switch port and you say switch port, access VLAN, whatever, VLAN 12, right? Usually the switch will actually create that VLAN for you, okay? So we can assume that when we go into the switch port and say switch port access VLAN, switch port voice VLAN, and enter those VLAN IDs, that will be created on the switch, okay? But in advance of that, if, if Cisco says, you know what, I'm gonna try to screw these guys up some way. How can I do that? Well, they could have VLANs actually created for you on those ports already. And you're like, wow, how nice of Cisco, that's great. Um, but they could be screwing with you somehow, right? They could have assigned it to the ports and then deleted that VLAN from the VLAN database, okay? Which means that it might look great on the port itself, on the configuration, but the VLAN's not really active, and it's not even on the switch, and it won't be able to pass information for that VLAN. So that could be a big problem. Of course, the way that, the way that you fix that is enter this first command, VLAN 11, that enables that VLAN on the switch right there. And then we can assign a name to it. There's other options as well, uh, but name, you know, innocuous command, it doesn't really have any effect anywhere. It's just nice and descriptive for you to see what the heck is going on. Now, they also could ask you, hey, make sure you name the VLAN capital P, lowercase h, capital O, lowercase n, ES, or something. They, if they ask you to, to match that case exactly, you, know, you must type to the letter every single case exactly as they specify in the lab, okay? So don't think that you can just say, oh, yeah, they just mean phones, all lowercase, and that's it. You could miss a question because you forgot to type a capital letter somewhere. Um, that's the type of detail that they're asking for on these questions here. Uh, in this case, maybe they asked for all capitals when they said phones, or maybe they didn't care, right? Um, I would say most of the time they probably won't care, but if they want to screw you up and make you lose points, very good way to make you lose points right there, okay? So we've got VLAN 11, VLAN 12, and 13 all named appropriately, phones, data, and servers, okay? Um, down here we've got interface VLAN 11, so, so now we're creating an interface on a specific VLAN. So what this is, is a switched virtual interface. This now allows the switch to participate in layer three for that specific VLAN, okay? This isn't like creating a default gateway. Well, it could be, depending on what your network setup is. It's just creating an interface in that VLAN that now you can connect on layer three, okay? Um, so it's essentially just a virtual interface on the switch um, that can be used to communicate at layer three, like I said. So. IP address 10.10.11.3, and then 255.55.35.0, that's a slash 24 subnet mask there. Um, so once that's on there, and I got maybe a port in VLAN 11 somewhere else, now I can communicate on layer three with the switch, okay? You can always communicate in layer two through that port. That doesn't mean you have layer three communication though, okay? So, uh, that's, ba that's the basic configuration. Now, the, the interface VLAN 11 here, that switch virtual interface, that's going to be used anywhere you have a switch port. And remember, not only on switch 1 do we have switch ports, but also R2 and R3. They have those little ether switch modules inside them, and those are going to be like layer 2 ports only. But you can create these uh, switch virtual interfaces on the routers, like, for example, interface VLAN 21 and VLAN 31. And those are going to be basically your default gateway for those VLANs. You can be terminating those, um, those connections there, okay? So, the, probably one of the better commands here to verify that everything's actually okay <laughs> with the VLANs um, is show VLAN brief. Now, this is going to show you a couple things. Number one, do I actually have this VLAN configured on my switch, okay? Um, and you can see the difference there um, if you look down 
on R3 here, we have show VLAN dash switch brief as opposed to just show VLAN brief. And so that is really kind of the difference in the command versus switch on the router. No, no big deal. You're going to see a couple of those differences uh, from the 3750 to the ether switch module. Uh, but they do that just to make your life difficult, right? Um, <laughs> but the, the command there, like I said, it's going to show you whether or not you have that VLAN on the switch, whether it's active, what the VLAN name is, if that VLAN is assigned to any ports. Uh, definitely a great thing to look at. Um, uh, same, same goal here for the show VLAN dash switch brief. I'll show you the same kind of information. In addition to that, when you add a VLAN, let me go over to the switch here. Let's just do a show VLAN brief here and take a look. I've got HQ phones, HQ data, HQ servers, a couple different VLANs here. Um, by the way, just as a side note here, VLAN 100 is your backbone VLAN, so that, that's where you get all your routes from the external network. So if you happen to delete that one, you're not going to have connectivity into your pod. So don't do that. <laughs> and also VLAN 199 is going to be your PSTN phone VLAN. Okay, so don't mess with that one either. But we can see here, uh, it, this is active, of course, like we showed. Uh, and it's assigned to a couple ports. It's in the switch. But the way to really make sure that you're forwarding traffic on those ports is by checking out spanning tree. And oh no, I said spanning tree. Ah, oh, we don't want to talk about spanning tree, right? It's evil. Um, well, spanning tree in, in terms of routing and switching, um, they can, there are several ways they can make that evil on the lab exam, but here we only have one switch, okay? So we're good. We don't have to worry about all the different methods of um, trying to screw you up there. So it's important for us, though, to see if we are in forwarding state for spanning tree uh, to make sure we can actually transmit traffic. So if I did a show spanning tree for a specific VLAN, like VLAN 11, it's going to show me the, the critical information that we're interested in here is whether or not these ports are forwarding. Okay, we've got forwarding for VLAN 11 on port FA101. We'll have to see what that is. Uh, FA1013 and 14 is also forwarding for VLAN 11. And then FA1024 as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the show CDP neighbors again to see what we're actually looking at. Um, FA101, you can see right down here, is actually R1. So we're forwarding VLAN 11 traffic to R1, okay? Uh, we haven't talked about why that is yet, but that's basically a trunk port that's connected to R1, okay? Now, uh, we're also forwarding out to, it says 13 and 14, and that kind of corresponds to, if you go back to the show VLAN brief command, where that's assigned, right? So we're forwarding on that VLAN. If I, for example, create, went to switch one here and said um, VLAN, you know, 888, and then I did a show spanning tree, whoops, spanning tree for VLAN 888, it's it, this first interface that happens to be a trunk is in listening state, okay? So it's going to go through that, those states of spanning tree, listening. It's going to be learning state right there, you can see. And then after that, it should go to a forwarding state. Now, if you see BLK for blocking state, that's a problem, okay? There's a reason why it's blocked the port, maybe BPDU guard or something like that, bridge protocol data units maybe coming in. You need to error disable the port or it's blocking it for some reason. Or if there's a loop, it would block it. You're not going to probably run into any loops, I would say. Maybe they could put in BPDU guard just to mess with you. Um, of course, all you have to do is remove that command. But eventually, you see it transition to the forward state there. Of course, that's the state that you want to see it in. Okay, this is a very good indicator that you've got connectivity and communication happening on those ports. So let me just go ahead and delete that VLAN now. Okay. So moving on here, the access port configuration. Now, we talked about you know, actually creating the VLAN in the database. Now, how about assigning them to the ports? Pretty straightforward. Um, it used to be really, um, you know, kind of not straightforward, I, I think. It didn't make a whole lot of sense, but you could do uh, a trunk port configuration on the phone. And it, when you think about it, it, it kind of does kind of make sense because you have the, the phone itself and the PC, right, that can, that can transmit traffic and possibly on different VLANs. So you want to be able to support multiple VLANs. Usually that's a trunk port. And really, we are creating a trunk port, we just don't know it here. We're, we're allowed to do an access VLAN and a voice VLAN. Um, so we, we could have done the same thing by switch port mode trunk and just doing two VLANs on that trunk or allowing the VLANs to pass. But here we're saying switch port access VLAN, which is our data VLAN, okay? And our switch port voice VLAN, 
which is going to be passing all our voice traffic and allowing our, uh, our phone to actually communicate at that level. Okay. Switch port mode access, of course, tells it that it is an access port. And then spanning tree port fast, not necessary, but allows it to go through that listening, learning, and you know, possibly blocking or forwarding state very quickly. Okay? It happens immediately, actually. As soon as you plug that, forward in, that port in, it's in forwarding state, just like that. Okay? Very important to do that, I would say, you know, just to make sure your phone comes up right away. No reason to wait in the lab, <laughs> for sure. Okay? Uh, the router is the same way. I, I have this no IP address command here. That's just taken from the show run. You don't have to type that. It's already a layer 2 port by default. Okay. So you see we have uh, access VLAN, a voice VLAN, and Spanish tree port fast, of course. All right. So now 802.1Q trunks. Now, of course, the trunk, like I said, is, is designed to pass multiple different VLANs. Okay. Here I want to draw just a little bit of what I'm talking about. If I've got just our setup right now in the, in the network, right? If I've got the router one and I'm connected to switch one and let's say I've got a phone over here on VLAN 11 and then maybe PC. It's a sweet looking PC right there. Let's say that that's on VLAN 12. Um, and then from, from here, obviously, how do, I, how do I communicate from the PC to the phone? they're on different layer three networks, right? So I'd have to actually go through the router to do that. Um, I can't do that on the switch unless I had, you know, interface VLAN 12, interface VLAN 11, and they were somehow my default gateway for that. I could then use only the switch, but um, I could really use the router to do this and route between VLANs. And that's what we're gonna be doing. And that's what you should get used to knowing how to do. Um, so on this router, let's, let's say, actually let's use CDP to check it out. If we go to do show CDP neighbor. We've got R1 on fast Ethernet 101. So that's on the switch. 101. And the router here is gig 00. So interface 00. So we know that that's where the configuration should go. Now, we're going to be routing multiple VLANs. So if we're routing multiple VLANs at any time to a specific place, we need to have a trunk port. And that's what this is going to be. Okay. So well, essentially, if we had, uh, you know, VLAN 11 here assigned to this port, the phone's going to communicate with VLAN 11 back to the router. Okay. Now, I'll make uh, VLAN 12 blue over here. That's going to go through the switch as well. So the trunk itself, you can see, is carrying both of those two different VLANs. And then we're going to have to terminate those VLANs somehow on R1. And that's going to be done through these virtual interfaces called sub-interfaces. Okay, the sub-interfaces are going to have, you know, a dot one Q tag to say, hey, which VLAN am I trying to terminate, right? It's a v is it VLAN 11, VLAN 12, what is it, right? Has the VLAN come in with a tag? If it has come in with a tag, you look for a specific tag, right, that VLAN ID, um, and then assign the IP address, of course, as you would any other interface. Now, if the VLAN does come in without a tag, let's say that that's represented by yellow here, VLAN comes in untagged, that's called the native VLAN. And by default, that native VLAN is one, okay? You could change that native VLAN, which means that that changes um, the VLAN that actually goes and gets sent as untagged to the next device, okay? So that could create some problems for us if they if they know how to manipulate that, and they do, <laughs> um, but if they want to put that in the lab for you. So let's look at this uh, configuration here on the, on the slide. Now on the switch side, all we have to do is define, first of all, our encapsulation. We have the opportunity to say .1Q encapsulation or ISL encapsulation, okay? So .1Q, probably the one you're going to most often use there, okay? And then we have to tell it that it is, in fact, a trunk, switch port mode trunk. All right, now we're allowed to pass multiple VLANs. On the router side of it, we said interface gig 00, that's going to be our physical interface. And then under these two, uh, or under this interface itself, we have encapsulation.1q11. So that's looking for any VLANs that are tagged with number 11. Okay? So if it, if it gets a tag from the switch and says 11 on it, it's going to this sub interface. That's where the packet's being routed. Okay? So that's 10, 10, 11, 1 here as our interface on R1 for that specific VLAN. We also have uh, gig 00.13, which is going to terminate our server's VLAN, um, 
1010.13.1. And of course you can see encapsulation.1q13. Now, if we did get traffic coming into this port from VLAN 1, where would it go? Think about that. Traffic's coming in from the switch, coming into the, into the router, no VLAN tag. That's going to go to our physical interface at this point, okay? Because that's going to actually handle un untagged traffic by default. Now we could, at the end of this encapsulation command, put the keyword native if we wanted to. Now that would say, at least show you what VLAN you're looking for and say that is the native VLAN. So that, that means I'm expecting it to come to me in untagged fashion. So for some reason they asked you to use native VLAN 11 on that trunk port, you could do that on the switch. Uh, switch port trunk native VLAN 11. And then over here, encapsulation.1q11 native. Okay, now it's looking exactly for that untagged traffic. You, you could alternatively have put the configuration on the physical interface once again, because that is untagged traffic that it's looking for. Okay, so this is our, you know, our, our setup that's affectionately known as router on a stick, right? You guys have probably heard that term before because um, we're routing all these different VLANs, you know, to one single point. That router can route between those VLANs on layer three, okay? So, next we have to verify the trunk in some fashion, okay? Now we've created the trunk, we've got communication going between the two. Is the trunk actually working, okay? If we do a show interfaces trunk command, this is gonna be a great indicator of whether or not we're working. Um, first thing, FA101. Okay, what's the encapsulation that we have there? So that's where we configure the trunk. We can see 802.1Q encapsulation. Great, okay. Um, the status, trunking, also great. Okay, we wanna make sure that that is in fact in trunking state. We also have the native VLAN as one, and that's the default but this would be a good place to see if they've screwed you up anywhere, if they've changed the native VLAN on you um, or something like that. All right, so native VLAN here is one. We could have had you know, any other native VLAN, but then we would have had to accommodate that on the other side with the router saying you know, native VLAN or encapsulation.1q11 native, 12 native, whatever that happens to be. And you can change that uh, per trunk. It doesn't have to be per switch. This other trunk, this FA1024 is the backbone trunk. So we won't mess with that one too much, okay? But you can see that's also trunking here. Now, the next section of this command is also very helpful. It's uh, VLANs allowed on the trunk, okay? Now, the VLANs allowed on the trunk is another good place where they could screw you up. They can disallow the VLANs that you really need to work on that trunk in order to just screw you up somehow, right? Now you don't have communication between your switch and your router because of that, okay? Uh, same thing, a VLANs allowed in active and management domain. VLANs in span entry forwarding state and not pruned. Um, very easy for them to enter some configuration commands to prevent your, your um, VLAN from actually going to forwarding state, okay? So my advice here would be to just do a quick show run of the switch and also the router and, and all the other devices for that matter, just to see what kind of pre-configuration they have in there. Never know when they're trying to screw you up, okay? But this command will hopefully allow you to identify those issues that might be on your trunk already, okay? So on the router side of it, we can just do a show IP interface brief. Um, and I have exclude unassigned here. So that will exclude all the unassigned interfaces essentially, just to do an abbreviated output here. But we've got 10, 10, 11, 1, 12, 1, and 13.1 as our virtual interfaces. Also uh, 100 is our, is our backbone interface. All of them are virtual. They're coming to the same physical port. They're all connected to switch one in some way. And that trunk is allowing those VLANs to get past back to switch one so we can have that communication, okay? And the status is up here, the protocol is up. We could see a status of up and protocol down there, of course, that would mean that we don't have the correct layer two configuration or there's something going on there preventing this, this protocol from coming up. Um, this is the state that we should see it in the router side though, okay?